So I grew up on a farm in uh, northern Canada, in Ontario, and uh, it was great life, but it was farm life. And farm life can be a tough life, right? You're up early in the morning milking the cows, or you're out in the hay mows, you're doing that stuff, So, and you did what you were told. Dad said you milk the cow at six, you milk the cow at six, with no option there, right? So again, uh, I also realized the value of hard work because there was a value to being up at that time and doing what had to be done and a lot of physical labor and uh, that was just how the early life went. We just learned to work hard when we were kids. Yeah, so you know, all the folks that I knew uh, back home, you know, they were just all working class, blue collar folks, great folks, but you know, all I ever knew, all I ever saw was work hard. You know, everybody was either a farmer or a mechanic or you know, somebody in the construction trades or something. So, I mean, that's what I saw. So that's, that's what I knew. I mean, I was in like uh, high school, early high school, grade nine, 10 and stuff. I was going to be a mechanic man. I was going to be an auto mechanic because I mean, that was, that was what I, I learned to do was to uh, fix my motorcycles because we couldn't afford to take them to the shop. So I had to f figure out how to do that and fix those old broken up jalopies. Right. And then, I don't know, like somewhere in like mid high school, like I think it was around grade 11, my brother left for university. And uh, I don't know, I never really saw myself going to university because nobody in our area went to university. All of our buddies were either high school dropouts or you know, maybe got through high school. And my brother went to university. I went, wow, that dumbass could go to university. You know, maybe I could too. And then what would that mean? And, but what would I take at university? And what would I study? And uh, you know, all of that stuff. And I had some pretty cool experiences uh, with a chiropractor who really helped me a lot because I you know, often played with kids bigger and older than me and particularly hockey and I get banged around and get banged up. And, you know, I remember walking into Curry Howe's office when I was 12 and literally my dad carried me in and Curry was a pretty rough adjuster, man. He hammered the hell out of me, but I, he got up and he says, no, you run out of here. So, I, oh, geez, I was scared to death. So I got up and I ran out and I thought, holy crap, man, if I could, somebody can do that with just their, their, what their knowledge in their hands. Like, I remember that leaving an impression on me. So I started to wonder like, you know what? Maybe I could be a chiropractor. I don't know. So, uh, hallelujah, I went to university, I got into chiropractic school, I graduated, and uh, then it was like, what the hell am I gonna do? <laughs> so, I started two practices from scratch, and uh, I did what I was told, I did what I saw. That's what I learned, right? I did, I modeled, I modeled what other people did. I modeled what my uh, chiropractor named Bill did, and uh, what I heard from the platform when I went to seminars, and so what I kept hearing was just, you know, get busier and see more volume. So I just kept seeing more volume, and we saw, 200 a week and we saw 300 a week and we saw 400 a week and it was like wow you know what um, this is pretty cool because I'm actually starting to make some money and pay my debts but you know we had the beautiful house we had some cars we had our beautiful island property but the thing that was puzzling to me was WTF I wasn't very freaking happy so it wasn't happy so therefore and what was everybody else doing well they must have been doing more volume so I started to do more volume even than that right and we went to you know, 500 a week into 600 a week. And it's like, I still wasn't happy. So I had a really great opportunity because my business partner, Mark, went on holidays for a couple of weeks and I looked after his patient base, you know, uh, as well as mine. And I saw like just under a thousand people a week for those two weeks. And I can tell you, I didn't know what it was for me, but I knew it sure shit wasn't that because I was really not happy. I wasn't the kind of father I wanted to be. I wasn't the kind of husband I wanted to be. Uh, I wasn't the kind of uh, chiropractor I wanted to be. Hell, I wasn't even the kind of human being I wanted to be. And so, you know, it's a very common myth in that profession that you just, you know, it's about seeing more people and serving more people. And, it, it, and everybody registers how happy you should be by how many people you see. Well, I can tell you for me, that wasn't it. So I sure as hell wasn't happy and then the big hidden secret for me was I was the chiropractor with the bad back. I was the friggin' hypocrite. How the hell could I have a low back pain every friggin' moment of every day of my life? I'm telling you something. I was not happy, I was hurting, and I was also getting friggin' fat, which was not something I valued. And so after enough frustration, enough grumpiness, I finally said, you know what, I might as well friggin' hurt and be fit as hurt and be fat. So I tried working out again, I tried running again, and I was just getting deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper down the friggin' dark hole. So one day I was out running beside the friggin' highway and I actually saw, I'm not proud of this, but I saw a truck coming and I uh, thought, you know what, I could end this all. All I gotta do is just step in front of that truck. That was a pretty dark moment, you guys. And uh, I could tell you, there was this little voice inside of me that just friggin' screamed, no! And I didn't do it. But I also remember standing beside that highway and I cried from the depths of my friggin' soul because I was broken, man, I was busted. And you know what, the friggin' platform speakers were wrong. 
the, I, I, all I'd ever known is to model and do what other people told me to do. And they were wrong, man. It wasn't about more volume for me. It wasn't about the thousand a week. So if they were wrong about that, then what else were they wrong about? And, and maybe I wasn't supposed to listen to everybody else. Maybe I wasn't supposed to do what everybody else did. But if I wasn't going to do that, then what in the Christ was I going to do? And then I started hearing about listening to this wee small voice within. <laughs> Quite frankly, man, that was for freaking crazy people. That was for people that went to the loony bin. You don't listen to the little voices. People hear little voices go to the schizo ward. But you know what? That was a voice that talked to me that day that said no. when I wasn't going to jump in front of that truck. What was that voice? How do I access that voice? I started changing my thinking. I started, you know, thinking maybe there was answers inside of me. I started to learn to get quiet. I started to meditate. I started to attract, to read different books, attract different teachers that were telling me to trust, trust the inner voice, trust the voice inside, trust my own uh, way of being in the world, make a definite success that was my definite success, not based upon other people's standards. That was friggin' weird, but I started doing it. So I decided to define success for myself and made a lot of changes in my life. Uh, Right, hon? We started taking more holidays. I started booking 10 to 12 weeks of holidays a year. I literally cut my office hours by like 33%. Kicked out a whole bunch of energy sucking patients, right? I uh, made sure that I was at every one of my daughter's dance recitals and ballet things and drum lessons and you know, all of that stuff, right? It made a lot of changes to my life. I started to define success for myself in my ideal, in our ideal, right? One of the best things I did was I started working with the coach because I now had a vision of what I wanted, but I wasn't sure how to get there. And one of my coaches asked me one time, he said, how do you know when enough is enough? I said, what the hell do you mean? He goes, how do you know enough time with your spouse is enough? How do you know enough time with your kids is enough? How do you know enough market is enough? How do you know enough money is enough? How do you know enough? I was like, whoa, dude, you're freaking me out. And at that point, I hadn't thought enough because again, remember, I modeled everybody else. I just did what I was told. And now I had to sort of source within and figure that stuff out for myself. It was, it was intimidating, but it was friggin' exciting. And so I define success for myself and I can answer all of those questions really quickly now. So what happened is people started asking me, well, how do you do that? How do you, how do you take 10 to 12 weeks of holidays a year, work 25 hours a week and make a nice six figure income and never miss your kids dance recitals, right? So I started giving people counsel and advice, but it just got to become overwhelming. It was taking a lot of time. And, and then the, my, one of my friends told me about this thing called being a business consultant, a business coach. And you know, you could actually charge for your service. And I went, damn, that seems kind of cool. So hung my shingle out, so to speak, and you know what? What we now call Full Circle Coaching and Consulting was formed from that process, from that transformation, from stopping listening to other people, stop modeling other people, listening to myself to find success for myself. And it's grown, and it's grown into this thing. I mean, literally, I left practice, which was one of the, whew, one of the hardest things I ever did, was to leave hands-on practice, because I loved hands-on practice so much. But I knew there was this thing, there was this opportunity to help other people learn what I've learned to stop modeling, stop listening to others, start listening to themselves, get success, and, and from that place of understanding the vision, now you need a plan. And we now have this proprietary thing called the Business From Within Blueprint, which lays out where you wanna go, looks at where you are, and then reverse engineers, and lays out a friggin' blueprint, just like you're building your dream house, right? Because you wouldn't build your dream house without a blueprint, I wouldn't. And I wouldn't design my dream life, the life from within, without a blueprint, and that's what we do. I've now handpicked several good associate coaches. We've got marketing people, we've got an It just keeps growing because more and more people want that. They want to get this definition of success. Themselves. They want a blueprint. They want to know how to live their best life. And my belief is, as wacky as it may sound, is if everybody would just get a little clear about who they are and who they're not and live their lives intentionally from within and build businesses and, and work for whoever it is they feel called to work for, but from within, from the guidance from within, this world would be a happier, healthier, more productive place. That's my dream.